Hello there, this is Scott over at Grub, Gizzard, and Gill. You can find me on my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Grub, Gizzard, Gill. You can find me on YouTube, which on my YouTube channel is simply Grub, Gizzard, Gill. Or on Twitter, which is at Grub, Gizzard, Gill. So, the number one question I receive is, where do you find plans for your chicken coop? Or, how did I find my plans for my chicken coop? And what I did is I simply went to Google and just typed in chicken coop plans and uh, up popped a whole bunch of designs. I went to the images and it probably took me, I want to say a few days just to figure out what design I wanted. And what I did is I just took components of each of the ones that I liked and I put it together on a graph paper and sketched it out myself and just cut the materials accordingly. So fortunately I have had experience with woodworking before and I've got a friend who helped me out who's a, who's a contractor so it went, it went together pretty well. We did have a couple of drawbacks. One thing that I would recommend is you find your roofing material first and figure out the spacing between there so that you can put your studs on center on the roofing materials. That way you can have your purlin set up correctly and your studs set up correctly and you can use minimum wood we had to use a couple of extra battings to uh, purlins to uh, line up the roof material just just right. Not much, but it was just a little bit more than what we would what we could have gotten away with. And every little bit does add that much more to your weight. Since my design is portable, here's my design right here. This is a portable unit. There's no way I could move this myself myself though because it's about 300 pounds. Now, if I had four wheels on it, possibly. This one has two two wheels on it that are fixed, so they are either in up or down position, but what I mean by fixed, they don't move left or right. Now, this is, uh, it was important to me to get this particular, to build this particular model for a couple of reasons. First of all, it had to be portable. I have three acres of grass that the chickens will be doing their work in. They'll be tilling they'll be debugging and they'll be fertilizing about three acres so I needed to have have it portable I just didn't want to free range them in an open yard there's dogs and raccoons and fox and all kinds of you know uh, there's all kinds of predators around here I've even seen a dead mink before in the, in the street so that uh, I know that they are in danger and as if you've owned chickens before they seem to find danger pretty easily so anything we can do to keep them away from danger, the better for us and the chickens. So it had to be portable. The next rule of thumb is we have to have a chicken coop size that's big enough to hold all my chickens if it's in a storm. So I needed something that was large enough for 12 chickens. The rough rule of thumb is 4 square feet per chicken. So if I have 12 chickens, 12 times 4 is 48. I needed at least 48 square feet of ground space so that they can exercise if I needed to keep them in the coop. So the size of this is actually 12 feet from the end wall to the front wall and I made it actually four and a half feet so they have an extra half a foot all the way down you know down here. Um, but the reason I made it four and a half feet instead of four is because I plan on using raised beds for gardening and when w this will actually drive right up on top of the raised beds when I'm done with them probably next season so that I can close the door and the chickens can do their debugging they can do their um, you know they can do their fertilizing and also their their scratching and composting they, they can do all that work within right on top of the bed so that's the that's another reason I built it to that spec all right, so if you just go to Google, like I said, and you could find all kinds of them, but let's let's look even further. If I had to do this all over again, and I do plan on making more, I'm doing an aquaponics setup right now. Uh, I'll be getting more chickens in the spring, so I've got a lot of projects coming up. And as nice as and easy as as it is to use a graph paper, I prefer to have something that's collaborative, and I don't have to drive all over the place to meet with my friend and. You know, we can work work together right online to look at projects, and design projects for that matter. So I stumbled across this program called SketchUp. And if you simply type SketchUp into Google, it'll bring you to the first entry, which is sketchup.google.com. 
and you'll notice it says on the title Trimble SketchUp. Google actually started this program called Google SketchUp. I don't know how long it's been. It's been at least four or five years. And then they sold it to Trimble recently, I think over the past year or so. It's a free program, but they do have a paid version of it if you're an engineer or if you want to use the very fine you know, measurement details within it. For our usage, we don't need to go down to the half a micron size, a half a micron of a of a scale. So we just use the the free version of it and it works extremely well. The way to get it is you just click that link and it takes you to the Trimble SketchUp page. Over here it's got a couple of things you can look at like videos and their showcase or read their blog. And if you want to download it, you click it here. This does reside on your computer. It's completely safe. There's two versions again like I know I mentioned earlier. This one is the pro version. It'll cost you about $500. I don't need that, you don't need that, so let's go to the download SketchUp, the free version. So it gives me two choices, two OS's to choose from, either Windows, XP, Vista, or 7, or Mac OS. I have Windows 7, so I'm going to choose that one. If I wanted to receive the SketchUp newsletter, I could fill in my email address here, but I'm going to skip that, it's optional. And I just click Agree and Download, and away it goes. So after you've downloaded it, You'll want to install it, just go through your typical install like you normally would, and it'll put all the components in the right folders. I've already got it installed, so I'm going to cancel this out, and I'm going to show you how to use the program. So what I do is I just, like any Windows 7 program, you go down to the bottom here and you click that Earth button, or the Microsoft used to be called the Start button, and you type in SketchUp and there's Google SketchUp and under my programs list I just click on it now the first time you use the program you're gonna to wanna to choose a template when you come back it'll remember your previous template so I'm gonna choose the simple template feet and inches but if I lived in somewhere let's say Canada or the UK I could choose simple template meters so that way you can choose where you know uh, your environment where you live in after I've chosen that I click on Start, SketchUp, and you can see that it's an XYZ axis. If you've ever worked with 3D CAD design or any type of architectural design software before, this should look awfully familiar. You have two axes here. These are 2D axes and your 3D axis is here. You have X, Y, and Z. Now Google simplified it, Trimble simplified it by calling it green, red, and blue axis. So you don't have to remember X, Y, Z, you just have to remember blue is the vertical axis, green and red are the horizontal axes. And what I do next if I want to look for pre-made designs is I go to the toolbar and at the top it says get models. It's got the yellow download arrow and if I click that icon I can just type in let's say chicken coop and if I hit enter there's so many options of chicken coops that it says there's too many to list. There's 12 up on a page and at the bottom here there's at least 10 pages so there's at least 120 chicken coop designs right here. Now I wanted to use a chicken, I want chicken tractors so I'm going to type in chicken tractor instead and it now it limits it down to 32 options, 32 models instead of at least 120. So that's a little more manageable. I can start there and always look around later if I'd like. Let's click this one and when you click any of the models it pops up with a little graphical representation and also uh, a little bit of information off to the side and the place to download it is right here so download model we do I want to load this directly into Google SketchUp model and my answer is yes so now it just plops it right into the 3D environment and as you can see as I move it closer to me the perspective gets larger and if it goes away from me it gets smaller and that's a really cool feature so you can get a sense for the 3D instead of just the 2D and graph paper on f is just 2D so this gives me a whole new dimension to think about so I paste it now I can look around at it I can scroll in I can zoom around pan it I can uh, scroll inside and look inside the coop itself 
I can get a good idea what it looks like in here. This is a very small design. It looks like it's probably made for about, I want to say, three chickens. Probably three by, it's probably six feet wide by two feet, two feet, or six feet long by two feet wide. That's what it looks like if I use her as a comparison. And that would be, if we use our rule of thumbs, that would be three chickens. No more than three should be inside here. And that looks like it's about enough space for three chickens to lay down in, up in the, in the nest box. So that's one model. There's just lots of different models to look at. And you can actually, I, I strongly encourage you, if you use this program, to go through their video tutorials. They're very helpful. It's easy to learn. It's not a difficult program. It's just one of those things, if you've never used one before, it does take a little bit of, bit of practice and getting used to. Let me look up Chicken Tractor one more time. And let's download this one. This one looks like a neat design. So again, I'm going to click Download Model. Yes, I want it to go into the design. And let's see here. I'm going to have to scroll around and out. There we go. Let's set it right here. And now I can go look around this one. Oh, this one's a neat one. It's got a fold-up side to it. It's got a it's got a really neat fold up design so that I can fold it out and access the chickens in here or in the nest box or the roost looks like a roosting area here's the nest boxes so this is all roosts up here that's pretty neat gives me some ideas for my next one this is a rickshaw design you can see that it's got the two handles up here so it's portable with one person and the wheels let's see how the wheels look Okay, well the wheels are down a little bit, so uh, okay, no, it's not. It's actually level to the ground. If you imagine a imaginary line right here, this uh, the wheels don't deploy until you pick it up. That's a pretty neat design right there. So it will fit flat on the ground back here. Nice, I like it. Cool. So I just wanted to show you that Google SketchUp can be used in in many different ways for our designs. You can uh, save them out, you can share them with friends, you can collaborate with them, and it's just a, a really cool free program that once you get used to using can be an extremely valuable tool. It will save you a lot of time and, and probably a lot of money. Uh, we used, we actually um, cut a couple of boards too short, and if we would have had a program like this we wouldn't have done that. So it wasn't much, but it was enough that we could have saved a few bucks. Okay, this is Scott from Grub Gizzard and Gill, and I'm signing out. Have fun with this program called SketchUp.